Hello, everyone. Um, this presentation will be on a, a, a free open source reusable code module named the Error Manager. Um, I'm uh, Petru. Um, I'm originally from uh, Romania. Um, I went to the uni to university in the UK, and I've been living and working in the UK uh, since. And uh, I'm uh, helping customers through my company, uh, Robusto Systems. Um, the motivation for designing um, a reusable code module to handle LabVIEW errors um, is that I realized most projects I, I was involved in uh, involved one or more LabVIEW Windows applications. So even systems that use uh, a number of compact Rios, for example, they often <coughs> also, of course, have a central Windows application to, to serve as the central uh, control system. Um, and almost all Windows applications need to have a reliable, robust, and user-friendly way to handle AVU errors. And good error handling is often an unwritten and assumed requirement. Um, the error handling behavior is often not explicitly specified by the customer. Um, and because of that, there is a good chance that the customer will be happy with any form of error handling, as long as it's robust and user-friendly. Um, therefore, it should be possible to use a reusable component to implement uh, typical error handling behavior, such as logging uh, errors to file and displaying uh, a window to the user when a new error occurs. So the design goals of the uh, reusable error manager were to achieve a standardized and reliable out-of-the-box error handling experience uh, that would reduce development time. Um, ability to log errors. Uh, this was this is of course very important because um, logging our errors is very important to understand what's going wrong in our in our systems and uh, is, is a great way to uh, troubleshoot uh, errors uh, later on, especially once uh, once a system is deployed and uh, the errors might happen. So new errors that weren't encountered during development are then encountered in, in production for the first time. Um, I found that if, if logging is not available, then users often just click OK. They don't necessarily take screenshots, and then you're left in the situation where you know an error occurred, but you don't know what it was. Therefore, uh, logging is super important to have that uh, place to go to. Um, also, it's nice to have user-friendly GUIs that uh, would show when an error occurs, um, and so, such that there's a, a nice window that meets the user even when an error occurs, which is an undesirable situation, but still you want to have a pleasant uh, user experience. And hopefully also there should be some sort of uh, window that enables the user to see the list of all the errors that may have occurred since the application started running. Also, I thought it's, it would be nice to have the ability to mark errors as red. This is similarly to how on, on WhatsApp, for example, you can mark a message as read or unread, and so on. And the reusable component should be able to be customized if needed. So of course, uh, everything should be open and you could go into the lower level VIs and change uh, anything you need. And it should be easy to integrate into any framework. Um, so now I'm going to uh, demo the error manager. So um, here I have a, a project uh, that was built from the NIQMH example uh, template um, that I think most people are, are familiar with. Um, and it contains some small modifications. Um, one is it contains this extra folder that simply contains some sub-VIs to enable us to generate some random error messages with some lorem ipsum text. And secondly, it includes the error manager library, uh, the module, into our uh, project. So this is essentially what we would need to do in a real application. We would need to just include the error manager uh, module into our uh, project. So now if we go to the main VI, 
of this uh, NIQMH example, uh, you can notice this part is exactly the same as it comes from, from the template. It wasn't changed. So the only uh, additions I've made were to add these two buttons that generate random errors in both loops and to add this button that I'll come to later in a, in a, in a second. If we look at the block diagram, we see uh, this is the functionality that generates the random error uh, in the event handling loop. And similarly, we have um, a similar uh, functionality here. So um, by default in the NIQMH uh, example, uh, the errors are handled in this error case, which is, which is nice. Um, and they are handled uh, by default uh, by the simpler error handler. So what would, hap what would happen when we run this example is when we press a button like this, we get the simple error handler message uh, like this, which is, is good. Um, the error doesn't get logged, but we do get the message here. So um, what we can do to improve this, we can uh, enable... Um, so I'm now going to switch from using the simple error handler to rather to um, calling an API VI of the error module uh, called handle error. And this is essentially a VI that enqueues the error as a message, as a command to the error manager who then deals with this error. And uh, handling that error could mean logging or not logging, that's configurable as we'll see, um, or displaying the, the message and, and so on. But essentially, once the error is sent into this VI, uh, this VI also clears the error because it's been sent, it's been dealt with. And the error manager itself, the, the module, is here. It's an asynchronous uh, module. Uh, notice it takes uh, an input uh, of a file, a file path uh, to a settings file that we'll see in a second uh, contains a bunch of settings that can be uh, configured. So now that we've enabled this new uh, error handling, then when we press the same button, now we get a different window. Notice it look, looks different than before. Um, in my opinion, it's more user-friendly. It's a bit more uh, polished. Um, it uses system-style controls and indicators. We see the error message, as we would expect, of course. We see the error code. Um, it's, it has a big red X, which, again, I found in production is really useful, just to make it very clear that something went wrong. Um, also, additionally, some extra information is uh, timestamps, uh, which by default we don't really have. So we have the timestamp both in, in the exact timestamp, but also as a running time uh, measured from the, uh, when the application started. Um, and we can, we can click OK. Uh, we can also copy these details to clipboard and paste them into a, into a notepad or so on. So if I click OK and generate another error, I get the same window uh, again. Uh, and notice the running time is rel relative to the start time of the application. Okay, um, and now we also get to look at this button down here. Uh, this is an optional uh, recommendation that I tend to use in, in my applications, which is I tend to put something like this uh, in the status bar of the applications, meaning the bottom bar uh, in, the, in the GUI. And if an error occurred, then the error manager has an API to tell us whether there are any unread errors that the user needs to kind of have a look at. So when that happens, we just use the property nodes to uh, make this button blink. And that, therefore, it makes it obvious that something went wrong. So when you click on this button, um, we use another API to launch um, the front panel of the error manager. And this is the, essentially the list that enables us to see a chronological order of any errors that may have occurred uh, in the system. Um, by, by default, when an error gets reported, it gets added to this list, and the background color of the row is uh, pale red. Uh, we can select these errors and then mark one as red, for example. Now that turns its uh, background color to green. We can keep this uh, open and move it to the side and uh, create some more errors just to have some more uh, rows to work with in the manager. Notice they get added to the list, of course. And we can select, uh, for example, let's say these, these ones, and I can mark the selected ones as red. Now notice some of them are green, some are red. Um, and I can also mark all of them as red if I 
one, two. So when I do that, all of them go green and the button goes back to being uh, green as well in the status bar showing to the user that everything is, is fine. Um, also, um, a log has been created in the, in the background, an error log, which we have the file path to uh, here. Um, by uh, selecting different errors, we can also have a look at the full error message of that particular error. So now, if uh, we go to the, uh, the error logs that were created, uh, we can see here, uh, this is the, the latest error log that, that was created. Um, and we can see in the file uh, name, we have the timestamp at which it was created. So essentially when the application started running, when the error manager module started running, we have the name of the application or test system. In this case, it's a, it's a dummy name uh, that can be changed in the settings file. Uh, and then the words error log to make it obvious that it's an error log. Then we have a header um, that tells us again some information about this file including when it was created, the exact timestamp. Then we have the actual errors that were logged. So for example, this marks the, the first error that occurred in the system. Obviously they are logged in chronological order. They're logged as soon as an error occurs, then it's written to file. And uh, of course we have uh, the timestamp, the running time, the error code, error message, uh, and the, the call chain as well, if, if one is available. Um, and I, we can scroll down. And we can see we have in total uh, 10 errors um, that we generated. And if we go back to the example and stop the application, we can close this. By the way, we can open and close this uh, as many times as we want. Essentially, closing this window minimizes the, the window. It doesn't stop the module. Uh, the module stops when we exit the whole application. And now if we go back to the log, we can see that a, a footer was added that uh, summarizes how many errors were reported. Uh, ideally, this should be zero. Um, um, and uh, again, the timestamp and the total uh, running time. Um, lastly, I would like to show the settings file um, that comes with the error manager. This is the file path that was, it's the only input that needs to be fed to the error manager asynchronous module is the file path to this file. There are seven settings. Um, for example, uh, in certain systems, in certain cases, we might want to handle the errors more silently, meaning we don't want to pop up a new error message. Um, rather, we, we just want to log the error, but we don't necessarily want to display that to, to the user. So I could come, come here and change this from show for all errors, meaning show the window for all errors, to do not show. And I need to type this exactly as, as, uh, as they are suggested in this comments here, the valued values. If uh, I make a typo, then when the manager module starts, it's going to validate these settings. And if it cannot parse it into valid enum values, it's going to throw an error and the module will stop. So it will be obvious straight away that uh, the configuration is wrong. So, so now that I chose that and we run the module again, we will see that um, errors are logged, reported, the module, just like before, but we don't get any more windows popping up again. So we can say we uh, deal with the errors uh, more silently, silently, at least as, the end uh, as far as the end user is concerned. Uh, of course, we can choose also to basically kind of hide away this sort of button again if we wanted to make it very silent such that almost it, there wouldn't be any indication to the end user that an error occurred. However, if we look in the log, of course, all of the errors are, are there. So that concludes the demo. And uh, going back to the, to the slides. Uh, so the benefits of the reusable module are that uh, it's completely free and open source. Uh, it's uh, licensed with the MIT license, which is one of the most permissive licenses. It enables the use in any type of application, uh, commercial and non-commercial, closed source and open source applications. Um, there are no password protected VIs. It is available on VIPM. Um, it's a standalone VI package. It has no dependencies on any other package um, 
as well, uh, which I think is quite nice because sometimes customers can be mindful of you know what exactly you're including and how many packages you need to include and, and so on. But I always find it's, uh, uh, it needs to be judged on a case-to-case -case basis whether you want to take dependencies or, or not. Uh, it's also framework independent. Uh, you can, I think, in use it easily in any, any framework. Uh, it provides and records timestamp information. And um, it, uh, the, both user-facing windows, which we saw, which are the list of errors window, which I call the main window, and the new error window, both of them use system-style controls and indicators, so hopefully they look quite polished. Um, and you can treat this module as a black box, which is the typical user case. You just send it an error and you let it log it and display it and, and so on. Uh, some of its key behaviors can be configured using the settings file. Like we saw, we can choose to uh, make the error handling silent or not. Uh, if that's not enough, you can um, uh, you can just customize uh, also the code if needed. This can, uh, again, is all the password, all the VIs are completely open, so you can just uh, modify uh, modify it. Uh, some current limitations. Um, um, currently, it relies on manually copy copy and pasting the error manager folder that gets installed by VIPM currently in the user lib folder. Uh, you would need to copy that uh, just manually into the project location where you're working in. So there's no tools menu to go tools and add a module to your, to your project. It's, it doesn't have that nice functionality uh, yet. Uh, in terms of operating systems, all the development and testing was done on Windows. It should work on Linux and Mac, uh, I believe, uh, because I haven't used any Windows-specific functionality but I haven't tested that yet. And also it should, or it might work on, on Compact Rios, on, on NI Linux real time, um, especially probably you would wanna use sil more silent uh, style uh, handling if you do that. Uh, it sh might work, it should work, but I haven't tested that either uh, yet. Oh, sorry about that. Um, the, the window sizes are currently hard coded um, and both windows, um, when they pop up, they are centered on the primary monitor. Uh, so on, on systems that might use multiple monitors, you might want to display the errors on a certain screen. That's not easily, that's not configurable uh, using the settings file at the moment. You would have to go into the code and, and hard code it to, uh, to, to display on a certain window. Uh, and there's no localization at the moment. All the text is in English. Uh, so again, to convert it to a different language, you would just have to edit the code and the, the front panel text and so on. Uh, and some final notes, it doesn't implement error severity levels, meaning all the errors are treated um, as having just one severity level, the same severity level. So it doesn't implement something like severity level one, two, and three, or other people uh, might want to use something like a debug info warning error and critical error and so on. Uh, this is partly by design because I found different people are using different uh, categories, uh, different names for these levels, and even different numbers of levels. Um, and in my experience also, I found that it was uh, good enough to treat all errors as just one severity uh, level. Uh, if I needed to have a particular error handling behavior uh, in one section of, of a code, I would, I would deal with, I will implement that specific error handling behavior. For example, let's say I'm trying to open a, a TCP connection, and if that connection times out, um, it cannot be opened, I might try to retry five times. And then only after that, I would report that error to the error handling API and treat it in, in the standard way. Um, there's a public GitHub repository. And yeah, uh, please send any feedback and suggestions to uh, my email address or feel free to create uh, issues in the GitHub repository. Thank you very much. Any questions?